day do you find people? It's red here. And today I will be reading some r slash entitled parents just for you. So get comfortable and get ready for these entitled parent stories. Entitled mother wants me to leave my house because she needs to isolate and her daughter would just die without a proper TV and Wi-Fi. My cousin is a single mother who lives with her elderly parents. Her daughter, five, was exposed to someone with COVID and is now starting to show symptoms. My heart goes out for them, but here's the thing. Cousin called me earlier to find out if there's a possibility I can go stay with my parents for two weeks so she can isolate with her daughter in my house. Going to my parents would mean having to put in leave at work. She can afford a guest house and even if she couldn't, our government actually provides some accommodations for cases like this. But no, apparently going to stay in such a place would be restrictive for her dearest baby and the child would just die without a proper TV and Wi-Fi. Also my backyard is nice and big and they would love to use the pool during the hot summer days. And since my parents are elderly, they could possibly use my help for two weeks. Believe me, they don't want me there. At this point, I can honestly just frown and shake my head because this woman really expects me to move out of my house and miss two weeks of work because her precious child would just die without TV and Wi-Fi. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not the kid who's going to die without TV and Wi-Fi. I'm pretty sure it's the mom. That's so... <laughs> That's it. Yeah, that is pure entitledness. Okay, here is our next story. Stick to your natural hair color, said a mom when her kid asked why she can't dye her hair. I'm Asian, with dark hair that naturally turns light from sun exposure. I'm half native to our country on my dad's side. It's pretty well known by most of my countrymen that our tribe folks usually have hair like me. Think honey blonde highlights. So I was at the grocery store where a teenage girl pointed at me and loudly asked her mum why she can't dye her hair like me. The mum yelled at me to stick to my natural hair colour and stop being a wannabe white person. I run into them again in another aisle. Mum gives me the dirty side eye while her daughter asks me where I get my highlights. Told her it's natural. This seems to piss off the mum who sarcastically remarked how my facial features, flat nose, angular face, Asian thick lips don't match my wannabe ambition. To which I combatively reply, if she only pays attention in history class at school, she probably knows my features and hair match my tribes. But alas, she probably flunked that subject. She went red, dragged her kid away, and that's that. Apparently Asian folks can only have one type of hair color. Uh, she's not so much an entitled mother as a racist mother. Like, that's just completely racist and, you know, Nothing gives you the right to comment on a stranger's appearance. It's just unnecessary and completely the wrong thing to do. I hope that the daughter understands that what the mom did is wrong in this situation. Okay, here is the next story. My parents threatened to take away my door because I don't want one of our dogs sleeping in my room. My parents just threatened to take away my door. I went upstairs to take my meds and get my dog for bedtime. My mum wanted me to take our smallest and most annoying dog to bed with me. I politely declined and said I would rather not. She insisted. I declined again. It only escalated from there. She doesn't want him sleeping with her and my stepdad because the dog touches her all night. I don't want him sleeping with me because he keeps me awake and wakes me up in the middle of the night. Something he doesn't do with them. I've told them before, but they don't care. They said that if I don't take him, they'll take my door while I'm at my dad's and throw it out so I can't have it back. I have severe anxiety, tons of mental illness on both sides of the family, and my privacy is what keeps me sane. They know this and still threaten to take my door. Oh my god. No, this is wrong. You need to, you need to report them, like this is not okay. This is not okay at all. Oh, that's the, no, please, please, please contact someone. Even if you're just calling your dad and get your dad to deal with this because this is not okay in any way. Okay, here is the next story. You can't eat that, I'm on a diet. 
So, a little context. My mother started a diet yesterday. She's on the slim fast diet, which I personally don't agree with. So yesterday I was working in my room. Yay, uni work. So before I knew it, it was half one in the afternoon and I was hungry. So I put myself a garlic bread in. Context over. Mum. You'd better not be having a pizza for lunch. But I am. I'm on a diet. You can't eat that in here. I stopped my boyfriend from eating his crisps in here because it's not fair. Meaning our living room. Fine, I'll eat in my room. So I put my garlic bread in, waited for the timer to go off, and then ate my garlic bread in my room. She was salty for the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, you no, that's not how diets work. Your diet is not everyone else's diet. I have some food allergies, so I have to eat a slightly different diet, but I do not force my family to eat the same thing as me, because why would I when they can eat other things? Yep, yeah, that's pure entitled mother. Okay, here is our next story. Please sir, stop dangling your baby over the shark tank. So I'm 18 and I've just moved to a new city to be with my, now thankfully ex, boyfriend. And I'm looking for whatever job I can get. I see an ad for a job at the local Sea Life Centre, a chain of aquariums across the UK, for someone to do talks to the punters and such. I've been in theatre groups since I could walk, so I think, great, I can learn scripts and talk about fish. I managed to get a six-week seasonal job over the October half-term leading up to Christmas. About 50% of my job is doing these talks for school groups about the otters, the sea turtles, the Finding Nemo exhibit, and so on. 15% is cleaning the outside of the tanks. 5% is dressing up in the giant otter mascot suit and getting kicked to shreds by toddlers at birthday parties. And 30% was sitting freezing my butt off at the touch pool. A simulated rock pool with crabs and sea anemones the kids could touch. Situated right above the constantly open front door and directly across from the open topped black tipped reef shark and moon ray tank and Basil the bottom feeding bamboo shark. He was my favorite. That's right, I said open topped with approximately 1.3 meter glass sides filled with water, sharks and stingrays. I kid you not, the number of parents I had to ask not to dangle their babies or toddlers over the one meter deep water was ridiculous. At least three times a day, probably rising to 10 or 12 on the busy weekends. The parents were not impressed by my adherence to basic common sense. I got thrown incredulous looks, angry retorts, the lot. The crowning glory, though, was the dad who informed me, It's fine, you can just jump in there after them. Dude, I'm a 5 foot 2 minimum wage worker. You could not pay me to jump into the shark infested water to save your baby that you just dropped. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Did you enjoy those r slash entitled parents stories read by red? Please give the video a like because I know you did. And don't forget to subscribe to. Yeah, I'm sure that voice is going to make everyone want to subscribe. Um, yeah, okay. Thanks so much for watching today. Bye!